Hi, welcome to episode 354 of the Corner of Knit and Tea. My name is Laura. I'm also known as Fluffy Kira on Instagram and Twitter. I blog over at thecornerofknitandtea.com, which is where every episode show notes will be. And I have an Etsy shop that is now open again. It is called The Corner of Knit and Tea, and I sell my hand spun yarn and knitting patterns there. Hi, how are you? It has been almost three weeks since I have seen you, and that feels like forever. Today is Monday, November 29th. It's about 2.30 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I have been digging out of my inbox all day and uh, working, but I wanted to take a break to say hello to you because it has been so long. So, when I last came to you, I think it was early in November, uh, around, let me think about this, like around November 8th, 10th, something around there, um, after, the, after the last Monday that I podcasted, on Friday we left for a big adventure. Um, Friday and Saturday we spent with my mother-in-law celebrating her 70th birthday and then we headed out to Tempe, Arizona where uh, my husband competed in his first Ironman. So Wes has actually been training for the better part of the last almost three years for this. Um, he was scheduled to do the Ironman in Tempe in 2020, but of course um, it was canceled due to the pandemic. Um, and the funny thing is, so he picked Arizona uh, because it is one of the best courses for beginners. The course is fairly flat. The swim is in the uh, Tempe Town Lake rather than in open water. In some places it's actually in the ocean. Um, and the biking course would be relatively flat as well. And so he decided to do that and his thought was um, the, the Tempe race is always the weekend before Thanksgiving and usually we drive out to California to see my family for Thanksgiving and Arizona is right next to California. So his thought was that he would compete in the Ironman, we'd hang out for a day or two and then we'd go to California. But of course the pandemic has sort of thrown all of those plans to the wind. Anyway, so we got to, we left um, Kansas on Sunday and we got to Arizona on, uh, we arrived late, late Monday night, late Monday night? Yes, late Monday night. Um, and we spent the week in Arizona and we didn't do too much. Mostly he wanted to get there. He wanted to go out and ride parts of the course. Um, he just kind of wanted to check out the area and uh, we wanted to adapt. Luckily, there's not much elevation and um, we are not too far above sea level at home and it's not too far above sea level in Arizona. So that was pretty easy. He got to do a practice swim in the lake and he had a couple days of attending some orientations and dropping off all his equipment. And on Sunday, November 21st, he completed his first Ironman. So he swam 2.4 miles in the Tempe Town Lake and then he biked 112 miles. And then after that, he ran a marathon of 26.2 miles. So it was a long, long day. He finished in uh, about 16 hours and 13 minutes. Uh, we were out there at 4.30 in the morning so he could get in the lake right around, um, well, technically his group got in about 7.20, but they started at 6.45. And he crossed the finish line about 11.35 at night. So it was a huge day. Um, I got a ton of new done, not all of which I'll be able to share with you because some of it has already been gifted and some of it I can't share because it's a sample. Um, so that was kind of our trip to Arizona and that was Sunday the 21st. Monday the 22nd we got back in the car and hauled our butts across the country. Um, for those of you who are not from the U.S., we live in the Midwest, um, which is approximately, well, where we live is approximately two thirds of the way between the West Coast where California is and the East Coast um, and where you'd find New York and Washington DC and Virginia, kind of a North South. Um, and so we had to get ourselves back to Kansas so that we could, because we had already been away from home for over a week and a half and we needed to do some laundry and we also needed to switch our wardrobes. When we were out in Arizona, it was absolutely beautiful. It was 80 degrees it was um it is a desert area so it's dry but it's lovely um and we had some wonderful days out there and it was really really nice because we knew we were coming back towards winter um but of course we also knew that we were going to Chicago ultimately for Thanksgiving um normally my family gathers um 
for Thanksgiving in California at my parents' house. However, due to the pandemic and some restrictions, and um, if my niece and nephew left the state that they live in, which is Illinois, um, they would not be allowed to go back to school for a little while. They would have to quarantine upon return. Um, and we didn't want them to have to be out of school for a couple weeks. So we all went to Chicago. Now, unfortunately, like I said, um, as of Sunday night, Monday morning, we were in Arizona. So we drove all day Monday, all day Tuesday, we got home to our house because it's basically on the way on Tuesday and we spent the night here. We uh, did our laundry and we repacked our suitcases and then we left Wednesday morning and drove to Chicago. So we spent a lot of time in the car. We got into Chicago Wednesday evening before, uh, the day before Thanksgiving, and I even got to do a little of the cooking. And this year, Roxy was old enough to join us for the cooking, which is kind of nice. Um, Thanksgiving was the big family holiday in um, my grandparents' household. Um, and this is actually the grandmother that taught me to knit. And um, when she got a little too old for it, uh, we took it over in our household and my sister and I worked on it. Um, you know, my mom, and my sister and I and there are certain foods that my sister and I have always made and this year we kind of brought Roxy into the fold on that so that was kind of fun um, and then we had a Thanksgiving which was wonderful um, I should note the holiday of Thanksgiving is actually um, kind of fraught. The uh, historical reason for the celebration is not that great. It is the Puritans arriving in uh, the United States and basically pushing the Indians out. Um, the Native Americans who were here first um, and you know it sort of signaled the uh, beginning of the um, white invasion of the United States of America. So um, the historical background is not great, um, and I don't think you can celebrate the holiday without um, thinking about that. Um, I will say that for my family, it is less about the historical event and more about the fact that um, we don't celebrate Christmas. So Thanksgiving is the one time of year when my family gathers for a really special meal. So for us, it is all about the foods that we make um, and the traditions that, that we keep about sort of the cooking rituals and the gathering around the table. Um, and I would be remiss if I didn't say that I am counting my blessings this year that everybody, my parents were there, my sister and her husband and her two children were there and everybody is happy happy and healthy. The kids uh, are just about to receive their second dose of the vaccination. Um, so we have much, much to be thankful for this year, including that we were able to make the trips that we did. We um, took our COVID tests along the way. My husband and I uh, have also gotten our third vaccination, um, as have my parents. So we were careful. We um, kept ourselves to a pod. We wore masks everywhere. Um, and keeping our fingers crossed, uh, the next week will tell for sure. Um, but hopefully everybody remains healthy. Um, so yesterday, Sunday, we drove back to Kansas City. And um, unfortunately, my husband's um, extended family, there was a death in the family. And so he actually repacked and left last night to go back to Illinois for a family funeral today. Um, so he will be there for a couple more days and then he will come home. Um, he is actually off work for um, most of December, so um, it was not a problem for him. Unfortunately, I had so many things to do today to catch up that I could not go with him. Um, but so I am hunkering down and getting work done and knitting. Um, and that is a little bit longer than usual for my introduction. I hope you won't mind the chit chat, but that is what I have been up to for the last couple weeks. So let's dive into the tea and the knits and you'll see more about what I have been up to. So today's tea that I'm drinking is called Vintage Christmas. It is from my local tea store um, and I expect it is probably a blend from Harney and Sons, though I have not specifically uh, seen it labeled as such. Um, I suspect that because a lot of the blends that they do are actually Harney and Sons teas. This one is a fun one. It is a black tea with bits of popcorn and nuts and sprinkles and even sort of the silver um, balls that you put on cookies. Um, I'll see if I can show this to you a little bit and it smells like berries and I don't think it's cranberry. Honestly, it really smells like strawberries to me and so I don't know precisely what is in here. Unfortunately, I it doesn't list all the ingredients. Um, 
but it is delicious and even though I am still not ready for Christmas, um, we've just gotten through Thanksgiving, I realized that I will only have a couple weeks really to drink my Christmas teas, so I went ahead and pulled some of them out and you'll be seeing them over the next few weeks. So that is Vintage Christmas and I have it in my roastery enamel mug because it keeps my beverages quite warm even though I'm not drinking coffee, um, but I, that is my delicious tea for the afternoon. So let's talk about the knits. The first one that I completed is one that I am wearing. And this is my Nanny Swaymo sweater for um, Nanny Swaymo in November. This is the, and now I'm going to completely blank on it, the Nidia by Vanessa Smith. It is a textured pullover. It is knit from the top down. It has some really cool detailing like this lateral braid here around the collar and then it's got this gorgeous textured stitch. It is a cropped sweater. I knit it to about 12 inches. That is actually far longer than it was intended to be, um, but it is where I really wanted it. Um, and actually I wore it on Thanksgiving with um, a dress and leggings and it was super, super cute. Um, I opted to do full sleeves, which is what the pattern calls for and again you can see the lateral braid echoed on the cuffs. Um, I knit this in a gorgeous orange called At the Hearth which is from Apothecary Luxury Fibers. It is her um, DK weight yarn. I think it's called Delightful DK and it is 250 yards um, per 100 gram skein. I ordered five and ultimately I think I probably had close to a skein left over but I wasn't sure precisely what I would need. Um, I think I used about what it called for in the pattern and as I said I did lengthen the body. Um, I ended up knitting the size 39 and a half I believe because the next size down was a 36 and a half and I didn't want quite that much negative ease although the pattern says that you can knit it with zero to um two inches of negative ease, so zero to negative two. So I certainly could have knit the 36, and if I wanted it to fit a little bit more tightly, I probably should have. That is how she, um, how Vanessa Smith, um, who is, I believe she's the model in the, yeah, she models the sweater in the pattern and she wears it with negative ease. Mine has just ever so slightly some positive ease and I actually really like that. I am very pleased with it. Um, I think it fits my body and what I was looking for perfectly. So I will call that a win. It actually technically still needs a blocking. I finished it. Um, I finished all but the last cuff um, while Wes was doing his Iron Man and, <coughs> excuse me, sip of tea. That's something got in my throat. Um, I finished all but the last cuff during the Iron Man, and I only stopped because um, the temperature fell down to about 45, 50 degrees, and my hands were too cold to knit. Um, and I was using metal needles to do the cuff, and I just decided to forget it. I'll do the, you know, 16 to 18 rounds on the cuff when I um, get back to the hotel. So I would say the two modifications that I made are that I knit the body longer which is fine because it's a top down. Um, it has some real interesting yoke shaping and um, short row shaping, which I really, really enjoyed. Um, I had to pay really close attention to it, but once I got beyond it, it was fine. Um, I really like this textured stitch. It, it gives it just a really nice um, depth and uh, the semi-solid yarn really accentuated that. I think my cuffs are a little bit shorter than the pattern intended. I think actually it gave a range of two to four inches. Um, and the deal is that my row gauge may have been slightly off because when I finished knitting the whole sleeve per the sweater pattern, I went ahead and knit the cuff that um, went to the length that I wanted it to fit. And I think the pattern indicated that I should knit it a little bit longer, but I don't have super long arms and I didn't want it to be um, a super, super oversized sleeves. So I just went ahead and knit it and I have I have plenty of room. Um, like I said, it is not blocked yet. I finished it on um, Monday in the car on our way home. I decided I wanted to take it for Thanksgiving and I didn't have enough time to wash it before that. Um, and then it was in my suitcase on the way home and I wanted to pull it out so I could talk to you about it today. So I've actually even shot some photos for the um, cover image of this video and so that I can share it but now it still reads, needs a really good blocking. And I think as soon as I finish recording, I'm gonna take it off and get it in the sink and get it blocking so that by later this week, it will be finished, finished, 
finished. So um, it was a pleasurable knit. It was easy once I got um, beyond the short row shaping. The deal with the short row shaping is that you are knitting back and forth and you are starting to establish the texture pattern. And um, the texture pattern itself has some extra yarn overs that get dropped. And so you just have to be real careful and keep track. But the um, instructions were excellent. Um, and it was just that I had to pay really close attention for the first 20 rows or so of the project. So not much in the way of modifications. Well written. I would highly recommend the pattern. I would highly recommend the yarn. And I am super pleased with the product, which is a new sweater for 2021 and 2022. So the other thing that I worked on quite a bit on the trip is I knit three pairs of um, kids socks two of which I know for sure are in my Instagram feed. Um, I knit Roxy two pairs of socks and Miles one before I ran out of time. Um, and so I knit those in the car. Those were pretty much my standard um, cuff down, uh, 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 slip stitch heel flap and garter and just out of some yarns that I had already used for various things. So I had, um, you know, a, a third to a half of a skein left over and they were perfect um, to make socks for the kids. So those are actually gifted. We exchanged gifts while I was there, which um, technically it wasn't Hanukkah, but Hanukkah started last night, Sunday. So we just time shifted and did a little Hanukkah celebration on Friday, um, which was lovely. And we um, exchanged some gifts and I got some cute, cute pictures with the kids. Um, they, uh, Roxy especially, uh, put on a whole bunch of her knits right away. Um, and so that just warms up my little heart. Um, and I got some requests for some other stuff, which I'll talk about in um, upcoming knits. So that is kind of um, what I knitted and finished while I was on vacation. I did actually start a few more things um, on the way home. And um, when I came home, I kind of repacked things and added a few more things to um, the car. I am working on a sample that I can't share with you. I have made great progress on it. I hope to finish it this week and send it back, um, but it is for nitpicks and they ask that I not share those. Um, so that has been where the bulk of my work has been um, because that is due um, right around Christmas time. And because of um, shipping delays, I wanted to be sure I got it done in enough time and I was worried about it. And um, I have just flown through it. It is, um, it, it has just gone really fast and has surprised me. And so um, that is where the bulk of my time has gone. Um, the other two projects that I have cast on are I cast on a hat. And this is actually for a class that I am teaching, not this week, but next week for Zen Yarn Garden. Um, Zen Yarn Garden does tutorial Tuesdays, um, which are their free uh, sort of um, technique and project tutorials. It is a Zoom session, but it is also available on Facebook and on their YouTube channel. Again, the tutorials themselves are totally free. If you want to participate and knit some of the projects that we do, um, you can sign up for those. You can get the patterns and yarn. Um, in December, we are focusing on quick gift knits. So last minute things that you can whip up um, if you need a last minute gift knit. So we have a hat, a cowl, and some fingerless mitts. And I wanted to get a head start on the hat. The yarn that I am using is um, the pattern calls for worsted. I am using um, the nightshade worsted. This is the second skein that I was sent for the socks that I knit last month. Um, and uh, in full disclosure, I get the yarn for a lot of these tutorials for free because I teach them. Um, I, your, your participation or your purchase does not in any way benefit me, but I am paid for my time and I do get some free yarn um, as part of the teaching engagement. So um, for full disclosure, I got this skein for free. This is on their nightshade base, which is a um, worsted weight and one of the plies is black. The other ply takes the dyes. This is their new Xena colorway for their new little French bulldog Xena, who is brown and black and kind of tan. Um, and at, like I said, this is the second skein they sent me a few months ago and I decided it would make a lovely hat. And what I have done so far is um, this, the hat is called Howard's Tam and it is by Lisa Wong. And um, I am working on it right now and I have finished the um, brim. This is meant to be a folded brim, so doubled. <laughs> So it's quite lengthy and now I have the cabled portion of the hat. I'm just about to switch to the larger needles and start that. Um, so that tutorial is next week. 
um, and you are welcome to sign up for and join that. We will be covering cabling um, and uh, knitting in the round and sort of a setup for a hat and this is a great um, quick last minute gift knit. You can do it in Zen Yarn Garden or you could do it in any worsted weight yarn you have hanging in your stash um, and I think it's just going to be a really nice hat. Um, it uh, is modeled on a man in the um, pattern which you can find on Ravelry um, but uh, I think it would be a great unisex hat as well. So that is one of the projects that I threw in the car and worked on a little bit. The second project that I took along with me is some hand knit socks, um, hand spun socks actually. I had, um, I have talked before about how I love, love, love Corydale for socks, and I have hoarded a few skeins of handspun in Corydale to make some um, handspun socks, and I decided that I really, really, I was wearing some handspun socks um, in the last week or two, and I decided I wanted to make more. So this yarn is called Grumpy. It was a club braid from um, Hello Yarn, and uh, it was from sometime last year or the year before, but I spun it up in the last year or so. And what I did is I took my skein and I divided it into two equal parts. Um, that is because with these skeins, I end up spinning probably, this is probably a worsted weight, um, and I end up spinning up, you know, between two and 300 yards, and hand spun is precious. I would like to use every last bit. So for hand spun socks only, I break from my favorite way to knit socks, which is cuff down with the slip stitch heel flap, the slip stitch um, heel flap and garter, and I actually use a pattern called um, David Schultz's Toe Up Sock Cookbook. I believe. David Schultz is the dyer behind Southern Cross Fiber and his pattern is really, um, it's a free pattern and it's really more of a worksheet and a recipe for a sock. And what you do is, I, he designed it mostly to be done with um, hand spun yarn. And what you do is you knit a little bit and you get a gauge swatch so you can find out your row gauge and your stitch gauge. And then he leads you through, based on the measurements of your foot, how to calculate how many stitches you want your sock to be around and how to work it from the toe up through the cuff. Um, and he also does a gusset and heel flap. It's just in toe up direction. Um, and I have used this pattern many times before and I really, really like it. And I always forget how to do it because I don't do it very often. I only do it with my toe up socks because then I can knit all the way up through the cuff and use up every last bit of the hand spun. Um, so I started a sock and I am working on the gusset. I'm not quite done with the gusset. And this is what I have so far. And again, this is grumpy. Um, I did mine in a two ply. Like I said, it was a braid from Hello Yarn Fibers. And you can see when you look real close up that I am starting to make my increases for my gusset here. So I still have more to go and then it will have a short heel turn at the bottom and then we'll go back and forth to do the heel flap. Um, and then we'll be back in the round and I will just knit until I run out of yarn and I will probably put a two by two rib cuff on there when I get to a point that my eyeballs say is probably time to start the cuff. Um, I am knitting these on US 2s. That is because I am a loose knitter. And so even though it is a DK or worsted weight, I am really liking the fabric that I am making um, on these needles. Um, and I don't know what else I can tell you. I am pretty much just following his pattern. I believe my sock is 44 stitches, which I have tried on. Yes, it is small. I have size six and a half feet. Um, but again, this is a worsted weight. Um, and I think that's what I did for my rye socks recently. So I think that I had an idea that that would be a good way to go. Um, so again, that's David Schultz's, I think, toe up sock cookbook, um, which is a toe up, um, gusset hat, gusset hat, gusset pair of socks. Um, and I am hoping to work on these this week um, along with cranking that sample out um, so I can have another pair of um, warm wooly socks for the season. Actually, interestingly enough, the weather here is lovely this week. Um, so in Arizona, like I said, it was in the 80s. Um, we went to Chicago and it actually wasn't terrible. One of the days was in the 20s and that was really quite cold. Um, but most of the day, most of them were in the 40 to 50, well, 40s. Um, 
which wasn't terrible. And actually it was 50 here yesterday and it's supposed to be 70 here on Friday. I know the cold weather is coming and I know I will be grateful for these um, when it does in fact arrive. So I'll be working on those this coming week. Um, so let's talk about a little bit about um, future knits on the needles. I don't have any spinning to show you this week because I have now spent um, almost three weeks away from my wheel. Um, I have a, a sparkly fiber on there that I am spinning for a friend in my um, knitting group and I will hopefully finish that this week and then I will move. I'm done with uh, approximately half of it now um, and I will move forward and pick something out for next week. Also my shop is uh, open again, just a little shameless self-promotion. Um, my shop is open again if you were looking for some hand spun as a Christmas gift, um, it is there. Um, or if you'd like to contact me about a custom spin, we could also do that. So looking ahead to what's coming up in the next few weeks, um, I do, and I didn't bring it to show you, I do, uh, will be working on a, uh, another knit along that I'm doing with Zen Yarn Garden. Um, I am working on the honeycomb blanket. I am doing the child size or lap size blanket this time. And I need to put some work in on that because I have a tutorial coming up on that one. Um, another thing that I did while I was in Chicago, and it will lead to another project, is um, I did a little yarn tourism. It turns out that my sister lives literally around the corner from a yarn shop. And the last time I was there, we did not go because it was August. It was kind of the height of the Delta variant. Um, the kids were not vaccinated yet, and we were a little concerned about it. But this time, um, us adults decided to take a little walk. Um, we went masked, but my mom and my sister and I went and checked out Knit One Chicago. Um, and as you can see, we bought a little something, but this was a cute tote. Um, so Knit One Chicago, it's a cute little yarn shop. Um, it is in the, almost the Lincoln Park area, um, if anyone who's familiar with Chicago is um, looking for it. And they do have a house brand yarn um, that they call Knit One. They have it in a variety of weights. I don't think they custom mill it, um, but they do dye it. And um, that is probably what I would have gotten um, had I not had um, a few things going on when we went. So um, my sister actually requested a new hat. And so uh, when, I, when I got there this year and I knit the kids hats and gave the kids hats, my sister actually asked if she could have a new hat. And so uh, I said, you know, let's walk over to the yarn store. You can pick something out. So we walked over to the yarn store and we browsed and I set her up in the kind of worsted air and weight bulky section because she lives in Chicago and it gets real cold. Um, and it said, you know, have at it, pick what you would like. And what she picked is this gorgeous skein. It is Kelburn Woolens Lucky Tweed, 100% merino wool. It is 210 yards for 100 grams. So it is a worsted Aran weight. Um, I think they classify it as an Aran weight, um, but it probably is any of those. And the color is mulberry. And it's this great tweedy yarn. And then it's got flecks of a little bit of hot pink and a few other things in it. And I have not picked out a hat pattern yet, but you should expect to see this turned into um, a hat sometime in the next couple weeks, um, because that is for her. And I'll get that knit up and sent out. The other project that will be, and they were so sweet, um, I, we were there on Small Business Saturday, which is the only reason I can think of that because one skein really doesn't merit a tote, but I got a little, oh, this has a price tag on it, so let me pull that off. She just threw a tape measure in the bag, so of course I will have a tape measure when I need one, and of course she put it in this cute little fabric bag. Um, I don't know, maybe every purchase comes with one. Um, the other reason that I don't know is because... Um, uh, my sister picked the skein and I went to take it up to the cash register and my mother said, let me buy. And so she went and paid for the yard. And so I had no, I had no part in the transaction. Um, but that is a project that will be coming up in the next week or two. Um, uh, I also have, and it is not here yet, I partake in a Little Black Friday shopping, um, a Little Black Friday yarn shopping, because the kids put on their sweaters, and I have actually made my sister a sweater in the past, and I was wearing one of my sweaters, and my mom said, can I have an Aunt Laura sweater? Because they refer to all the things, the kids refer to the things that I make from them as Aunt Laura sweaters and Aunt Laura socks and Aunt Laura hats. And my mom said, can I have an Aunt Laura sweater? 
And I said, huh, well, your birthday is in March, so how about then? So um, I purchased some yarn uh, because basically I decided that while I was with my mom, I would have her look at some patterns um, and then I would purchase some yarn, maybe in the Black Friday sales, um, so that I could knit her something. Um, and she, I'm probably going to end up knitting a cardigan by Hohi Locatelli. I showed her quite a few patterns by quite a few designers um, and she consistently liked all the Hohi designs and picked those out of the lineup when I added some of those in. Um, so that will be coming up in the next month or two so that I can work on that before her birthday in March. Um, she would like a fingering weight cardigan which makes sense because she lives in Los Angeles so it is not particularly chilly there most of the year. Um, and I picked a beautiful yarn that I ordered from Simply Sock Yarn Company. So um, I will share that when it arrives, but that is another project on my to-do list. And the final project on my to-do list, and since a lot of these things, are, since a hat and some socks are fairly small, um, my hope is that I can crank this one out um, as well. I have another friend who is expecting, and so I'm thinking about doing another um, set of booties and a bonnet. Um, like, I can't remember... If I guess maybe I didn't show you, I knit the Beloved Bonnet by Tin Can Knits and the Squirrel Nut Socks. Uh, I think they were the Squirrel Nut Socks. The Squirrel Socks by Tin Can Knits. Um, and I did them in a DK weight. And last time I knew it was for a girl and I did it in kind of a um, purple plummy burgundy colorway. And this time I don't know what she's having. And I happen to have... Um, so... When I bought this sweater quantity to do my Nanny Swaymo, I think I remember telling you I bought four skeins, but I really wanted five. Um, and But they only had four. And then I went back to the dyer and was able to buy a um, another skein, but I was concerned that the dye lot wouldn't match. And so what I did was I actually bought two skeins from the dyer, and I bought one skein in this colorway, hoping that it would be a close enough match that I could make it work. And then I bought one skein in a contrasting colorway, um, thinking that if I could not make it all work, I could do a contrasting um, collar and cuffs and hem. And so the colorway that I picked, because I thought it went beautifully with the orange, and you can see it does, is this deep pool. And again, this is her um, delightful DK, 100% fine merino wool, 250 yards. And this is the deep pool colorway. And again, it is from Apothecary Luxury Fibers. Um, and I, I, this is my first time using a lot of her yarns. I have spun quite a bit of her um, fiber and she is semi-local to me. I think technically she's somewhere in the middle of Missouri, um, but I call that semi-local because she comes to all our local craft shows. So, um, I have this, I have this skein which didn't have a use and I think it would be, um, lovely for a bonnet and socks. I can get both out of the same, um, skein and so that would be a wonderful gift, um, that I think I will duplicate this month for a second friend who is having a second baby. So, um... Uh, and, and as a follow-up, the colors um, did not match on my sweater, um, but they actually were close enough that when I alter I alternated on both sleeves, and I don't think you can tell. I don't think it looks that different from the body. Um, and so I'm good. <laughs> so I have that as well. So that is kind of the knitting content. As I said, I don't have any spinning content. I expect December will be a time to finish up on a lot of small projects. I really would like to knit some charity hats. I took a bunch of extra odds and ends with me, um, but ended up working on this sweater and on the sample. And of course, once I got to Chicago, I was doing a ton of cooking and playing with the kids, and I did very little knitting other than um, in the car on the way up and back. That said, the next three weeks should be a little bit light work-wise. Um, and I, you know, I have some samples to finish um, and I may get another sample to start. Um, but I feel like I might be able to crank out a few small projects. Um, and so that is kind of my plan. I'm thinking about Christmas Eve cast-ons. I'm thinking about New Year's. I'm thinking about Valentine's Day socks for the kids because February will be around the corner. I mean, in knit time, that's only two months, two and a half months away. <laughs> So that is what I am working on. I hope that you have had a wonderful few weeks. I will try not to miss podcasts again for the foreseeable future. We're not going anywhere. I think that was the last of our travels until 
I might have to travel for work in the spring, um, but otherwise I don't think we have a lot going on. So um, I hope you had a nice break. I hope you had, um, if you celebrate Thanksgiving or met with family and friends, you enjoyed good food and um, laughter and um, enjoyed time with your family. I hope you're um, not too stressed leading into the holiday season that you've got your gift knitting done um, and have some time to be a little grinchy and just knit for yourself. Self, um, or for anyone else if you still want to knit for anyone else. Um, and I will say um, it was good to see you and I will be back in a week. Um, and until I see you next time, happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping, and I'll see you soon. Bye!